Hello there, friends. While you wait for the August 2004 episode, if you've got to be kidding me, which should be coming probably late next week, please be excited. We have a, a special treat for you. It is the first episode of our Ring Kaking series on Patreon, delivered to you right now for free. So you can listen to all of that first episode, and if you would perhaps like some more, you can head to patreon.com slash gettingmeortnhad.com to listen to that entire series about Rinka King, also the entire Monday Night War series. Also, you can go back and listen to the first episode that's also in the podcast feed of that Monday Night War series for free. If you'd like to get a little taster of that one too, you can listen to our full series on GFW and also our ongoing series on New Japan Pro Wrestling from 10 years ago, Rain Takers, where we're covering the 10-year anniversary of every New Japan show. Also coming up, our Wrestling Society X series. You can also listen to our drafts, our end-of-year award shows, our watch-alongs. So much stuff sitting there on Patreon if you enjoy this episode of Rinka King. So without further ado, episode one of our Rinka King series from Patreon. See you next week. <laughs> Welcome everybody to a brand new series here on the You've Got To Be Kidding Me Patreon. We are watching Ring Ka King. So excited. We're reviewing Liam every single episode of the wonderful TNA India spinoff. I'm so excited for this. Because I assume you've never watched Ring Ka King. I've never seen a second of Ring Ka King. I've, I think, seen all of the episodes, but I, I think because, like, obviously the show aired in India, so I think they were a little inconsistent toward the end of the series, so I might not have seen all the episodes, but I've seen at least the vast majority of them. I assure you, fans, that one day we'll do a series where I have seen all of it and Garrett has seen none of it. But it is not today, for we are delving into Rinka King, something I have legitimately been very excited to see for a long time and ever since this was brought up through our discord and through our twitter i have been very excited to see rinka king because i've always heard of it but never have seen any uh footage from it because at one stage you had a podcast proposal for us which is probably something we'll do for the patreon which is Mm. uh reviewing one and done wrestling series so the likes of rinka king the likes of wrestling society x i'm sure there's plenty of other ones lucha underground was one that i was really excited for well, the mirror that had four seasons. That was less fun and done, but yeah. Yeah, but like two of them count. <laughs> but yeah, reviewing the the shows that that came and went were just uh, uh, just a uh, gust of wind. Uh, in we're the gonna world look of at wrestling. the World of Sports reboot. That was another one. Oh God, yeah, I forgot that even happened. And TNA were involved in that too. They were like promoting it for like a half second there. I also wanted to do uh, reality shows like British Boot Camp. And tough enough. Yes. So, uh, yeah, I, th- I think that's a cool idea. But we will start with the TNA adjacent one, of course, which is Rinka King. This is our, like, uh, our attempt at, like, crawling out from the TNA bubble. We're, like, something slightly TNA adjacent, but not specifically TNA. It has a bunch of TNA wrestlers and is fa- uh, fun- backed by TNA. It's not really funded by TNA. It's funded by the, the television network because it was made on... The TNA basically were commissioned to make it for uh, Colors in, in India. The Colors Network, which is where it aired which is an end of all network. So it is pretty much, it's, it's still operated and booked by TNA. But still, it's only kind of TNA. A stronger production than TNA would ever reach, in my opinion. I prefer TNA 2010's lifting board thing they had. That's that rule. Best stage in wrestling history. You would. <laughs> I do. Fair enough. So if you have never heard of Rinka King, in 2012, I guess technically 2011 when it began and when it formed its uh, like the genesis of its idea, but in 2012, TNA began airing a a not multiple episodes aired a week. I can't remember quite how many episodes aired a week, but it aired between January 28th and April 22nd. So I think it was something like two a week, but maybe not every. Well, week. see, that's what I was curious about because um at the end of episode one they said tomorrow, and I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, so there was multiple episodes away, but they aired a, a television show made specifically for the Indian market. So they went over to India, they took a bunch of completely untrained wrestlers, trained them to be wrestlers. Like Magnus and Scott Steiner <laughs> and... <laughs> yes, everyone's favourite untrained wrestlers, and then decided to put on a wrestling show. And like, 
I can't entirely speak to the history of wrestling in India, but it's very clear there wasn't like a burgeoning independent scene to draw talent from. Obviously, like this is the, the Kali era, so there's probably like some interest in wrestling in India because Kali's a very big star. Legitimately, I've seen footage of him on Indian Big Brother. Yeah. He looks like a megastar there. Have you ever seen that footage? No, I haven't. There was one viral clip that went around where he was breaking up a fight between two other members. I wouldn't want to be the person that's between Grey Kali. <laughs> Imagine you're trying to get like in a fist fight with someone and then fucking the Grey Kali walks in like, hey, yeah, hold it down, brother. And you're like, oh, okay, I will. <laughs> he probably just walks in and picks you up and walks you away in his arms and you cannot do anything about it. <laughs> that guy's <is> cool. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, sure. Okay, brother. <laughs> I'm all in. So, uh, like, he does have a school in India now, doesn't he? So, like, there, there I is... I believe so, yeah. Well, I remember, like, he had a show that drew, like, a couple, like, tens of thousands of people. Well, he is a very big star. Like, a legitimate, like, uh, <laughs> megastar over there, as far as I'm aware. But uh, as, as we'll discuss when we talk about how, like, these episodes had, like, 14 million viewers. Um... Oh, just a, you know, a minuscule 14 million. <laughs> 20,000 people in India... Comparative to population, isn't that many? I think I, I think Tony Khan would murder a person for that many <laughs> millions of viewers. Yeah, first ring cucking right here. It, it, you need Max B. I think that's what we know. What we're learning here, Liam. <laughs> AEW needs to bring in superstar Max B. I love Max B. Max B should be brought in, take him to the LA dojo, make him a Shibata pupil, <laughs> pupil, and then bring him back. Uh, to New Japan proper and he'll be a megastar but yes TNA made this entire show they went over there I think twice I want to say two batch tapings maybe three I think it was two Uh, two batch tapings banged out this 26 episode television show and we are going to cover every single episode I'm not sure we'll only do one episode per show we might start doing two at some stage because the episodes are also very quick well, they're 40 minute episodes, they're one hour television shows, which is your least favorite thing in the world. I mean, I want. Well, you know, see, here's my point. When I want more hours, it's when the show's good. <laughs> so I was like, I watch a one hour rampage, I'm like, oh, you, could, you could bump this by 30 minutes, get some more people on the show. But if I don't know if I want to watch two hours of Rinka King, to be fair. You don't want a 40 minute Max B match? I mean, maybe. Depends who he's wrestling. <laughs> I like one-hour wrestling shows. I love one-hour wrestling shows. They're one of my favorite things because they always, even when they're bad, they fly by. They're the easiest thing to watch. And like that, that this episode of Ring Cooking was bad, but whoa, I don't know if I agree with that. No, I wasn't. I said not that this episode of Ring Cooking was bad. Oh, sorry. I thought you said that it was bad. I was like, wait a minute. But yeah, it's uh, the one-hour wrestling shows. They're the the best thing in the world. You you are a savage for ever wanting any one-hour wrestling show to be longer than one hour. Listen, I'm sorry. I dislike wrestling. I want to see more of it. I'm sorry that you don't like wrestling, but it's fine. You're a content fiend. I am a content fiend. That I will, like, fully admit. You just want content. I do. We're in the age of content. So, right here on January 28th, 2012, taking you all back nearly a decade at this stage. Good God. Ugh. Which is weird to think about. <laughs> that Ring Cat King is nearly 10 years old. But also, like... I don't know, I feel old now. This is the first time I've ever felt old when talking about wrestling shows. Really? Yeah, well, like, we've never talked about something where I've been like, oh, you know, 10 years ago. I've always felt like the youngster talking to the old man. (laughs) Well, we spent the entire time talking about TNA, it was just 20 years ago, but sure. Yeah, but that doesn't count. That's like, anything before I was cognitive doesn't count. You were five. Yeah, I was barely hanging in. <laughs> you didn't have a brain. <laughs> no, I was I was just like, yeah, sure, colors, blue, green. I I don't even I'm not even sure if I knew what wrestling was at that point. Mm, just, just you saw the screen and all you saw was the colors. Yeah, and then I was like, wow, look at those colors move. So, Rinka King episode number 1, January 28th, 2012 began with a frankly brilliant dance number. <laughs> I loved every second of this. 
Because, <laughs> like, the first half of this episode, maybe longer, <laughs> is, like, one continuous segment. I don't think we get a wrestling match for, like, 40 minutes into this show. Yeah, and, like, the, the wrestling matches that are on this show are exceedingly short. Yeah, the house show matches, who cares? So there's this giant dance number, there's this giant, <laughs> like, they have a Rinka King song, which is separate from the actual opening titles. <laughs> of course. They have a bunch of women dancing. They have these like fireworks sticks, which is very impressive. Yeah, it's it's, it's a it's a huge production, both both in terms of the dance number and in terms of what Ring King actually looks like. I mean, let's take a moment to just appreciate the arena and the stage design here. This might have been the best stage I've ever seen in wrestling. Yeah, it's very elaborate. It's insane, and it wraps around the entire arena. Yeah, there's these, like, big LED boards that have have the wrestler's name on them or have Rinka King on them that tell you... It's fantastic! It's actually very useful because, obviously, if a lot of people's names were just said on this show, I wouldn't be able to look them up because, obviously, I'm stupid and uh, ignorant and I can't spell Indian names from simply hearing them. And they're they're right there on the board. It's very useful. Yeah. I, I really loved the design of this show. I thought it had a great aesthetic. And, like, the crowd are insanely hot because, again, this is probably a large majority of their first time seeing wrestling. Well, I think you can see that a lot from uh, the crowd has a lot of merchandise, Mm. like 8x10s and such. And I think you can tell that a lot of these people didn't know who these people were before they got there. But then started to develop an attachment through the merchandise. Like, oh, I want to support this person. Because you saw a lot of... 8 by 10s being held at the front row. Or they were just distributed for effect. Which is also a complete possibility. <laughs> yeah, because this is very much a television production. Because the, like, the, there's a good chance not everybody in the crowd was actually fans. Because I know when TNA went in 2017, when they did their mm-hmm. India tapings, I know like a large majority of that audience, I believe, were, were like plants, were actors. I'm also very curious about how much of these crowd reactions were piped in afterwards. Mm. And, like, by all accounts, for, for television productions, by the way, like, in India, by all accounts, having those, those, like that, that, that audience just be actors isn't uncommon. Okay, fair enough. But, like, for a lot of it, the crowd reactions were a lot louder than what looked like the crowd were reacting to. Mm. So, I mean, like, listen, I might be completely out of it and just not looking at it right, but for a lot of it, I was like, are they really this hype for this? Because... <laughs> If you just listen to the crowd, this whole show was on fire. This is the hottest wrestling show you've ever seen if you were just listening to the crowd. Maybe sometimes. They didn't look to be jumping with the joy while it sounded like they were jumping with joy. Well, even like when they did those big camera cuts to the crowd, like a lot of the the first row were going nuts. But then you look a little little closer in, you're like, are these people really this hyped for Mahabali Vera? Maybe they were, because again, this is probably a lot of their first time seeing wrestling, so literally everything is new to them. See, that's why I gave it to them a lot, where I was like, oh, maybe they're just into the show, but I don't know. For a lot of it, especially a lot of the more sustained sections of the show, I was like, I don't know if people are really into this, or if it's just, hey, let's put some cheers in the editing. Like, think back to when you were that wee six-year-old looking at the colors. First time you see a clothesline, it's pretty cool. No, I, I was a smart from the beginning. I was like, eh, the six years old, I was looking at this, like, I don't know if John Cena's really working to the standard that I'd hoped for here, but, eh, we'll go. You were like, he's not sinking in that STF. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, I, I mean, look at it, it's over his forehead, it's not over his chin at all. There's, there's no pain there. Uh, like, listen, I was like, I've been put in submission holes, and this is not it. So we go on through this entire dance number, uh, full song, full dancing, lots of dancing. Lots, lots, lots of dancing. Uh, a, a guy named Micah Singh is the opener, who, unfortunately, I was looking him up. So he used to be, like, a mid-level singer there, but he has accusations of being a sex pest, so that's unfortunate. Uh, I thought it was Micah from TNA fame. Oh, um, of The Rising? Yes, of course. Future New Japan Pro Wrestling Superstar? <laughs> yes. Out here singing the Ring King theme song? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I was hoping. I mean, oh, I'm sad to learn that he's a sex pest because uh, I thought this opening was pretty great. Yeah. Ah, well, that's what you get for reading people's Wikipedia pages. Garrett. Yes. I have some not-so-breaking news, but you may not have heard it. Is it about Ring Kang? 
No, it's about a TNA adjacent pro wrestler though. Oh, is it the news you see on the right on four one one Mania as we look at TJ Hogg's Ring Guy King recap for structure? <laughs> yes, it's about TNA celebrity Pac Man Jones. Yes, what about him? Are you aware that he is sentenced to prison for a bar fight? No, I am not. Isn't he's been in jail before, hasn't he? I don't know if that's true, but. According to the site, authorities say that Jones knocked out a, ba- a bouncer during the fight after he snapped on some stuff at the bar named Clutch OTR. Jones claimed at the time that he was acting in self-defense and was charged with two counts of misdemeanor assault. He was sentenced to 180 days in jail, with 150 of those days suspended. Didn't Pac-Man Jones kill a guy? Uh, he wasn't... There was like a shootout, wasn't there? Like during like a strip club or something. Yeah. Allegedly. <laughs> Should we say it? Well, this is behind the paywall. We can say whatever we want. <laughs> he shot a guy in Vegas at some stage, I think, yeah. Hey, but you know what? Wasn't he the one who had, like, the great debut, though? What would you call it great? He came out and just... He won the tag belts. That wasn't in his debut, technically, though. Though he did pin Sting. But the whole thing was that they signed Pac-Man Jones to be this big crossover sports superstar... And then the Tennessee Titans, who he was playing for at the time, were like, oh, sorry, no, he can't actually do anything physical. So he would just dance around and, and not do anything physical until he returned in 2013, in which he hit bad influence with a body slam. I remember that 2013 return. I posted it at the Twitter like two weeks ago, so that's probably where you vividly saw it. No, I remember it at the time. Yeah, well, the fun part was Dixie Carter teased on Twitter that there's going to be a t- the return of a former TNA world champion or world title yes. holder. Yes, I remember this. And everyone was like, who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? And then she revealed, it's like, it's Adam Pacman Jones. And everyone's like, yes, I'm so happy about this. And like, this is a few months after the August one warning. So it's like, fucking Dixie, would you stop? Stop tweeting, Dixie, please. He sent us to 180 days in jail with 150 of those suspended, so he's not going to be there for long. What does that even mean? He's going to be there for 30 days. <laughs> so it's just like, uh, hey, it's 180. It's not really 180. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. So Rinka King is sponsored by Tata, which is an Indian truck manufacturer and well, automobile tra- manufacturer and vehicle manufacturer. I was going to say, like, fair play to them. They look like they got some money on this, so fair enough. Yeah, Chacha Prima, the, the, the truck in particular that was being sponsored, its its slogan was speed like never before. Much like this Rinka King action. Yeah, that's a, that's a good branding crossover. Except for the fact, I don't really feel like people generally market trucks for their speed. I don't know. Like, perhaps if you're a business and you're like, hmm, I need some sort of uh, shipping company that will deliver one thing from one side to the other. Uh, do I want speed or do I want... Someone who's going to do it just cleanly. It's like, maybe I want speed. Maybe mm. I'm like, I'm desperate for this thing to reach point A to point B in this time. I don't need reliability. I don't need hauling capacity. I just want speed. Speed, baby. So Kubra site uh, is our host. Again, if, if I mispronounce names, I'm sorry. Yeah, let's be real from the start. Like, we may fuck this up. If we have any Indianist listeners who do want to call us out for um, uh, incorrect pronunciations, please hit us up on Twitter or on Discord or literally anywhere you can find us or on the Patreon. We're, like, we're trying, but also we may be stupid. Uh, may is, doesn't even need the qualifier there. but uh, She seems to be a modestly successful actress. I like her. I like her a lot. Because she came across with the confidence that a lot of the... Like, I guess the only really comparison point that we have is WWE, people who do the same job. And she came across with a confidence and a key that I really appreciate. And, like, she's basically doing the JB job, and she's literally standing next to JB doing it at one stage. And she does a good job of it standing next to JB, who is very good at that job. She reminded me a lot of Melissa Santos. Yeah. Like, in the same sort of way where she had a confidence whenever she was on screen. Hmm. She has been in uh, a bunch of stuff since. She's uh, in the Apple TV show Foundation, which is uh, Lee Pace and Jared Harris in it. I have not seen that. <laughs> so there you go. That's a 2021 show. Renewed for a second season. For a lot of actors or actresses who are put in this position, being in front of a live audience must be, like, pretty, I don't know, intimidating. And she really seemed to roll with the punches here. Well, it probably depends whether or not you've done theatre. Mm. And she's a TV host as well, so she's probably well used to this. Well, fair play to her, because she seemed to roll with it, like, fine. She was great here. 
Yeah, she comes out, she gives us the full Renka King introduction. She, it's like, uh, 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 this show is quite weird in that, like, they do not obviously give English subtitles for the Indian parts because it's a show that airs in India. Just a real realization I had, and maybe it's some sort of, like, ethnocentric point of view that I had, but I was like, oh, it's not in English. <laughs> this is not made specifically for me. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wait a minute, they're bloody not talking English at all. <laughs> they're speaking words I don't understand, and then not telling me what they mean. And then, like, immediately after, I was like, of course it's not. <laughs> but, 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 like, a solid minute, I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I do appreciate that, like, oh no, not even appreciate, but I do like that thank you seems to be a consistent point between both languages, because whenever they say thank you, I was like, aha, I got that bit. When when the, the, the announcer was counting the finish of the main event, he said 8.13, which is uh, Indian for 1.2.3, but it, the way he sa- said it, it sounded like Irish for 1.2.3, which is 8.03. I knew that. Why would you bring that up as if I didn't know that, that was Irish for one, two, three? Of course. But I was like, when I heard it, my ears like, like caught it in a way. I was like, oh, is it the same as the Irish one, two, three? I was like, no, it's it's pretty different. But the way he said it, Language it is sounded fun, the same. Huh? Sure is. So, but yeah, this show is quite weird in that, like, obviously there are large sections in in or in Hindi, and then there is large sections that are in English that don't seem to be being translated. Well, that's why I thought it was interesting because there's clearly some sort of heel stable being established with Magnus, Sanjay Dutt, and Scott Steiner. And I thought it was very interesting that they were like, the mouthpiece of this is obviously going to be Magnus. <laughs> yes, not Sanjay who speaks Hindi. Who is speaking Hindi throughout the show as well. It's not just like he's speaking it in like, like he can speak it. He is speaking it in the show's context as well. Mm. And it's funny, there is a backstage promo later in the show with with um, Magnus. And, like, Sanjay is kind of slightly translating him as he's going. Like, he, he does... A little bit, a little bit, yeah. He does, like, the promos 50-50, where it's like, oh, you know, Magnus is doing his promo, and then Sanjay drops between English and, and Hindi. So, it's interesting that, like, Sanjay is probably the biggest star they have that's mm. not, like, trained from the ground up. And he's a heel, which is an interesting choice. Yeah. I thought this was really interesting as well, that, like, the guy that you think would kind of be the face of the brand, just because he's someone who was established as well as can be someone who represents the brand. And he can speak the language. Yeah, well, he can speak the language, but also, like, you know, he could be the face of the company if you really wanted him to be. And it was just like, they kind of threw him out there as like, yeah, you'll be a heel. And not even uh, like main event heel. You like be you have mid card sidekick heel to Scott Steiner. Yeah, and, you'll be the Magnus. sidekick to Scott Steiner and Magnus. Hmm. So Cooper then introduces us to Harbhajan Singh, who is a very famous Indian cricket player with the greatest nickname of all time. Sure, let's go. He is the Turbinator. That's pretty great. It's so good. <laughs> So, um, how fam- how familiar are you with cricket, Garrett? I am loosely familiar with cricket. I will watch some cricket here and there. I can't watch test cricket. It drives me nuts. But I'll watch, like, 2020 or one-day stuff. See, yeah, exactly. I'm the exact same way. Like, I will watch one-day stuff all day because I think it's really fun. And I will play cricket 100%. But um, as far as multiple days over a long period of time, I, I can't get invested. Is cricket big in Ireland? Not particularly. We had a very good World Cup run uh, something like 15 years ago where we, we went to, I think, the quarterfinals and we had some big comebacks and it was all a lot of fun. And that's like probably the most popular cricket that has ever been in this country that, that period. But we're not very good at cricket, so we don't really like cricket. Yeah, we're very much into cricket here. Mm. Australia's, Australian loves the cricket. Like, um, we have the Ashes, obviously. Uh, I always find it fun that we do go overseas and we're like, we're like a brand ambassador. <laughs> we're like, hey, you guys like cricket? We like cricket. You want to see us do some cricket? It's actually interesting. You know, that like we do the um, uh, international rules, which is a crossover between Aussie rules and Gaelic football, where they... Yes, I've, I've seen some of that. It's very, it's very like, I guess it's weird to me because I've only seen Aussie rules and I'm like, yes, look at this. And then I was like, whoa, what is this middle ground between like rugby and AFL? And obviously they haven't done it recently because of COVID. And I know there's like controversy about it because it, it started getting extremely like rough, like weirdly yes. physical and violent well, between the two uh, countries. Well, AFL is inherently a physical sport. And like Gaelic football, less so. It's, 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 not, it's not a contact sport. 
Yeah, shout out to Zach Tui, my favorite player, an Ir- an Irish bloke. Well, there you go. I have his uh, I have his uh, Guernsey in my closet. Oh. Yeah, I have Zach Tui in my closet because uh, my favorite player. Y- you have him there. You, you just have the man sitting in his clear closet. Hey, Zach, you want to talk on the? Nah, sorry, he doesn't. He doesn't like wrestling. He doesn't want to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, it's Rinka King. Uh, yeah. But I was going to say, we, we should have done a crossover between our other sport, hurling and cricket, both of which are like stick sports, so that you could find some weird hybrid between them. What's hurling? You've never seen hurling? I'm unfamiliar with the term. Maybe I've seen the sport, but I haven't seen the terminology before. So uh, we have a stick and a small, like, baseball-sized ball, and do you try mm-hmm. and get the ball into the goal? I haven't seen this at all, I don't think. It is the fastest field sport in the world. Wow. There you go. Have you never seen hurling? Ah, uh, I mean, I may be familiar with it, but it doesn't like perk my brain, my brain molds at all. But no, um, I don't know. I think it's interesting how much like Australia and I and Ireland seems to have crossovers in certain things. Yeah, we we share culture because like a lot of Irish people go to Australia. Obviously, the, the foundation of Australia involved a lot of Irish people being sent there. I mean, trust me. Like, I mean, even modern day, like, there's a lot of Irish immigration that happens here because a lot of people come here on their um their what do you call it backpacking over like post uni levels Mm. definitely especially in um regional australia where i met a lot of irish people uh in that time period and we get a a surprising amount of your australian culture or an australian television like home and away and neighbors air here every single day Uh, we get a lot of your children's programs i think a lot of ours go over there i'm not sure but either way we get a lot of yours i mean i'm sure there is but like we have such like a hodgepodge mix of American and British and Irish television that reaches us. Because like I would have watched a lot of Blue Summer High in my day. Yes, that should be a, a post Patreon thing that we review uh, Blue Summer High at some point. <laughs> review all of the Australian television that made it to this part of the world. I mean, that was a big show for me when I was growing up as well. Yeah, I like that show. It was a good show. That was a a um. A, a permanent fixture of my post uh, class viewing. Whenever I'd come home, there would definitely be some blue summer high tie on there. And of course, around the twist. Yeah. Uh, have you ever ever felt like this? Having strange things happen when they're moving around the twist. Oh yeah. See, our, our Australian and Irish listeners will like know know exactly what's happening here, and everybody else will be completely oblivious. Actually, around the twist, I think aired in the UK as well. So like, like some. Around uh, the twist is definitely something you should check out if you haven't seen it. It's a tremendous show. Great theme song, as you mentioned, saying. Yes, one of the best of all time. Home and Away, of course. Another standard, I think. Um, Sally's death was uh, a black mark in the history of the show, and I will defend that to the day I die. <laughs> I never actually watched Home and Away, so I don't know who Sally is. Uh, Sally was my favorite character growing up. Mm-hmm. And I believe in, I think I was grade three or four, I killed her off, and I was devastated and never watched the show a day after. Disgusting behavior. I, I watched it every day until that point, and then they killed off Sally, and I was like, how dare you? It's not Australian, it's uh, from New Zealand, but Shortland Street, I was watching some of yesterday. I'm unfamiliar with Shortland Street. Horrible. It's no good. Hold me in your arms. Don't let me go. I want to stay forever. Close each day. Home and away. It's not the Shortland Street theme song. No, it's the Home and Away theme song. A much better show, I assume. Yeah, I was just watching the Shortland Street. It's like, this is just really bad acting. Maybe they can't act down there in New Zealand. I mean... I won't say it because it'll be deemed as <laughs> some sort of cultural attack, but... Your classic New Zealand-Australia culture war. I mean, like, for the Americans that are listening, which I assume is most of the people, uh, <laughs> imagine your war with Canada? <laughs> it's about the same. Every country has that. Like, it's it's Ireland and England, it's Australia and New Zealand, it's Canada I mean, and I, I, To be fair, I think there's a lot more understanding with the England-Irish... <laughs> tumultuous yes. attitudes there. we we have very good reason to be mad at the english i mean have you read history it's pretty crazy <laughs> they have done many things to us yeah as i have learned <laughs> <laughs> uh so we were talking about harper's round thing before we span off did you play cricket cricket um we played it in school i never played it like in any sort of post school studies but i definitely played it at lunch and 
stuff like that. I wasn't very good at it. I was pretty good as um, a batter, mm. but not so much good at anything else. I don't have very good hand-eye coordination. <laughs> so ball hit in the air, you're probably not going to catch it. I, I will run after it pretty quick, <laughs> and like I, I can throw it to the next person. But uh, yeah, I was a good bowler. I, I could strike some people out as a bowler. Throwing things at high speed at people is probably a specialty of yours. Uh, yeah, my uh, my sp- extracurricular sport that I ever played was uh, football. Yeah. Where where did you play in fo- uh, Australian football? Yes. Uh, no, no, um, no, no. Sorry, uh, like uh, football, football. Like soccer. Yes. Oh. I was a goalkeeper. You seem like the type. I was a big boy, so you know, <laughs> if it just hit me most of the time, and I was like, "Yep, <laughs> I'm good at Stop this." Going in goal. <laughs> See, I wasn't very fast. But I had good reaction speed. Mm. So I had the ability to to jump about as I needed. Jump up, I also jump liked up, that for the most part of the, the games, I wouldn't be doing a whole lot. So I was just kind of standing there talking uh, shit with the defenders. <laughs> Which is the, the best way to go. I mean, it's what I found fun. But yeah, yeah, I was definitely... Um, I, I That was the only sport I enjoyed. Because mm. as much as I played Aussie Rules, I always got injured. <laughs> so... <laughs> It's a it's a pretty it's a pretty hard yaga sport, Aussie rules. I I've never played a contact sport. Yeah, trust me, it's a very contact. I don't want to be tackled. I don't want to be hurt. You you have a long history of injuries doing any physical activity. <laughs> Cause I'm not very athletic, but I kept playing sports. So <laughs> then you decided to try to go into pro wrestling. Yes, and then I I dislocated my knee there. Now listen, I'm not like I'm... That's not over yet. I might still continue. Fair enough. I think it's a disregard for my own health. <laughs> like, I'll jump in there, and then if I get hurt, I'm like, yeah, you know what? What did you expect? Well, that's perfect for pro wrestling, then. I'll tell you a funny story about breaking my thumb during Aussie Rules football. Mm-hmm. I was going out for a mark, and as the ball came in, it hit me directly atop of a thumb. Oh, that happened to my brother once. We were playing football, lumped the ball up in the air. It hit him in the, I think it was the index finger. It didn't break his finger, but then he became faint and nearly collapsed on the way down the hill Mm. to go home. So what happened here was I was going out for a mark. It came down directly on the tip of my thumb, Mm. which pushed my whole thumb downwards, breaking the bones in the bottom of my thumb that reaches my hand. Pleasant. And I I remember I was walking home because I I walked home every day every day and i rang my my mom i was like hey i think i may have hurt myself (laughs) during sport and she's like because i was a coward who would try and get out of everything by calling my parents they were like nah just walk home and i was like fine i'll walk home by the time i walked home my thumb had like tripled in size nice (laughs) and my mom was like oh you're not lying (laughs) we'll go to the hospital (laughs) this is what you get for being a compulsive liar Listen, I I fully accept that burden. <laughs> but, um, yeah, they took me to hospital and I had fractured the bones in the bottom of my thumb to the wrist, like, kind of the wrist area. Mm. Like, it pushed down and broke whatever was at the bottom there. And I had to have a cast for a couple of weeks. I have only injured myself twice, technically once, really. Uh, when I was, I don't know, two or three, I slipped on a Lego catalog and broke my leg. Oof. And then it never entirely healed. So, like, a few months later, I sw- slipped on a toy car and broke my leg again. <laughs> I've had a ton of near-death experiences. So, those are the only times I've had serious long-term pain. I've almost died, like, three times. Didn't you tell me about the one in the boat? The one on the boat is my big one, mm-hmm. where I fell into the engine of a boat. Yeah. But I was hit by a car at, like, three. How were you hit by a car at three? It was like, it was very classical. Like there was a ball that was um, rolled you ran under the road. To chase the ball. I chased the ball, <laughs> and I was struck by uh, someone driving a car. Uh. There was the boat incident, which we've discussed on the main show, mm-hmm. and there was uh, a time where I was trying to get something from the top of the fridge, and there was a ceramic uh, water jug on top of it, and it fell. And landed atop of my head. And the ceramic jug broke in half. My skull. Perhaps as well. But, you know, who knows? Because we just kind of rubbed it off and I just kept going. That explains a lot about you. Oh, uh, it was... It was. I think that was a legitimate concussion. Oh, I nearly drowned once. 
Oh, I also did drown once, yes, during a a sports day at school where we went out and we were hanging about swimming. I'm a pretty good swimmer because I think most people in Australia are pretty good swimmers because there's water everywhere. Mm. But um, there was one of these giant uh, plastic barges of sorts that someone was sitting atop and I tried to go up and I couldn't get out from under it and I was starting to intake water at an alarming rate <laughs> before I, I managed to make the surface. Yeah, because I can't swim, still can't swim. What? You should learn how to swim. It's a, like it's pretty easy and you should know how to do it. I really should. But we were on holiday in Spain at the time. Uh, maybe Spain, might have been Portugal or the Canary Islands. One of these places that people in Ireland regularly go on summer holiday. And I was swimming, swimming, swimming. And my brother was there ahead of me. And I, he was like, hey, you want to come out further in the pool? I was like, yeah, okay. He's like, stay close to me. But I didn't stay close enough to him. And there was a step in the pool, which I fell off of. And started drowning. <laughs> and uh, I was literally uh, uh, underwater, taking in water. And my dad jumped in the pool to save me. It actually turns out my dad didn't even know it was me that was drowning. He just saw a kid drowning. He's like, oh shit, I need to save this kid that's drowning. Dived in, pulled me out. It's like, oh wait, it's my son who is drowning. <laughs> and yeah, bailed me out. Thank you, dad, for saving me from drowning. Ha, what a funny story, hey? Thank you, Liam. I only nearly drowned. Which brings us right the way back to Harbhajan Singh. We took a very long detour from Harbhajan Singh. <laughs> Wait, before we go back to Harbhajan Singh, I have a question. Uh-huh. How prevalent are... Well, what kind of bodies of water are in Ireland? Well, we are on the edge of the Atlantic Ocean. You might have heard of it. I'm vaguely familiar. So we are an island sitting in the Atlantic. Yeah, I'm an, I'm an island too. That's crazy. <laughs> We are a much smaller island. Uh, are you a continent as well as a country, as well as an island? No, just an island. Yeah, that kind of sucks, huh? We're also part of a country, but that's a, going back to the whole England ruining our lives thing. Yeah, we don't, we don't, that's, a di- that's a different story for a different time. Mm. We're all three, but you know, no need to brag. You're not, Australia's not a continent. <laughs> yes, we are. That's an arrogant Australian thing. Oceania's the continent. We are a country... A continent and an island. Australia is not in and of itself a continent. We are. Typical Australian arrogance. I'm just saying we are and you're not. Listen, I'm just saying uh, bow to the queen and all that, but whatever. You and your commonwealth. Yeah. Me, notorious supporter of the commonwealth. So Harbour's Ransing comes out. He is the Rinkak and Goodwill ambassador. Uh, they they do a chant for him. All the crowds start is chanting. The sing is king. Yeah, they're like sing is king, sing is king, sing is king. I mean, it was over as hell. So what can I say? The huge baby face here in Rinka King. It was a guy in um Progress who did the same exact thing. Sing is king. Yeah, he stole it. Did he steal it from Harbour Jan Singh? I mean, I assume it was about the same time. So maybe he got there just ahead. But sing is king was definitely a Progress uh, staple of the time. So, Harbazan announces that uh, Rinka King will have world and world tag team titles. Of course. We are specifically focused on the world title on this show because he has the belt on his shoulder and we are introduced to the people that will be in the World Championship Tournament. Do you want to talk about the world title first? Yeah, there's a photo of it on our Twitter at TNA History Pod if you'd like to take a look at what the Rinka King title it looks, looks like. like. Shit. <laughs> it looks awful. It's a terrible belt. It does look like just a generic plate slapped on a generic looking belt. It looks like shit. <laughs> it looks like it was like a five-year-old craft project. And the interesting thing about it is there's a title on the ring skirts, mm-hmm. but it looks nothing like the title that they're wearing. Yeah, because that's like the ring hacking logo is kind of like a belt, isn't it? Which it would have been a good title. <laughs> well, they didn't go for it. I'm sorry. I was disappointed. So we are introduced to everybody that's in, the, I think everybody that's in the tournament. Yes, everybody got a video and an entrance. Yeah, so first up is Chavo Guerrero, who talks about how he's coming to India for the first time and then uh, spouts some Eddie lines, just so you remember. I enjoyed that he was like, well traveled, except for India, and I'm here now. Yeah, this is what I'm here for. We are introduced to the first yep. of the Indian wrestlers, Max B. Personal favorite, up the Max B, hope he wins the whole tournament. Based on his promo, I believe Max B stands for Maximum Balance. Ooh, I like that. Because he says that in English at one stage, so I assume that's what mm-hmm. Max B stands for. Although maybe it's a CM Punk thing where he changes it every time. Killer B, Max B, let's go. This should form a stable. <laughs> yes. 
So Max B is doing like this fighter boxer gimmick. Yeah, he's a shooter. Next up is Sir Brutus Magnus. Boo. And imagine uh, uh, an Englishman in India is very easy heat. Well, you'd think that, but I didn't get much of a reaction, so... <laughs> no, uh, I assume us and the Indian share our, our, have a shared hatred of all British people. Yes. As everyone who was colonized by the British does. <laughs> yes. Myself, Garrett, <laughs> everyone else. Just noted hatred of the British. Mm. Dr. Nicholas Dinsmore. Alright, let's... F- Alright, fuck this guy, first of all. How dare he? How dare he walk into this company and A, steal Stevie Richards' gimmick, mm-hmm. and then B, take his theme song? Well, the weird thing is it's not his theme song, except for the start, which is like, paging Dr. Nick, paging Dr. Nick. Fuck this guy. Did you recognize what the actual, like, instrumental track was? No, was it someone else's? Yeah, it was the New Church. Did it? Was it? It was an, an instrumental version of the New Church theme. It was, li- it was a little remixed, but yeah, it was the New Church theme. Man, fuck this guy. I, I have I have no love for Dr. Nick Dinsmore. If you do not recognize the name Nick Dinsmore, he was Eugene in the World Wrestling Entertainment. Fuck this guy. Uh, we're introduced to Sanjay Dutt, who introduces himself as the number one Indian wrestler. A heel? Very strange choice to make Sanjay a heel. I don't get it. Uh, then we're introduced to... Probably the biggest legend, of course, of Rinka King. The, the long-standing, like, legacy of Rinka King. No other than Mahabali Vera himself. I'm hitting the Vera shuffle right now. It's weird that there's a person on this show called she which we'll get to in a minute. But obviously, uh, v- Mahabali Vera's name in TNA would go on to be Mahabali she But not, you're not to mistake your she and Vera's in this here episode of Rinka King. Garrett, yes. are you doing the she shuffle oh, right sorry. now? Yeah, let me do it. Uh, all right, arms moving. Hey. Oh, she hey. shuffle. Hey, ow, hit my elbow. <laughs> ah, oh god. Uh, I bashed my elbow off a door frame uh, the other day and I drew shoot blood. Ow, hit my elbow so hard doing the Vera shuffle. <laughs> now you know, now you understand that the, not everybody can do the Vera shuffle. You need training. Apparently, I, I will I will put effort and time into it. If you notice during the matches on the show, there's a lower third crawl being like, look, these are trained professionals. <laughs> do not do it. I thought it was very funny, because it's like, hey guys, wrestling's not real, but don't try it. Yeah. Again, probably because the, this is probably, and like, WWE and TNA aired in India for years and years, so it's not like the first time India has seen wrestling, but they still felt the need to put that up there. Which I guess, there's probably a reason for it. I mean, you feel like they do the WWE, WWE tactic of doing it at the start, mm-hmm. but hey, just chuck it during the matches as well. Just don't do it. Don't hurt yourself. Uh, Scott Steiner's here. Holla! If you hear me. Yeah, Big Papa Pump here in Rinka King. And over as fuck. Of course, he's Scott Steiner. Of course. He's like the biggest star on this show. Uh, far and away the biggest star on this show. But I gotta give credit to Vera. Vera was over. Yeah, he had that cool like shoulder thing. He looked cool. Yeah, he had like the Tanahashi jacket. Mm, ace Mahabali Vera right here. <laughs> Is that the first time that Mahabali Vera has been compared to Hiroshi Tanahashi? I doubt it. They're natural comparisons. Fair enough. And then rounding out the tournament, Matt Morgan, who calls himself the best seven-footer in wrestling today, which is really limiting, like, the, the pool of people you're comparing yourself to there. And, like, big babyface American, too. Yeah. A very weird selection of people they decided to bring over here. You, like, I get it, though, right? Because Guerrero has the name value, mm-hmm. right? Magnus, the British guy, mm-hmm. right? Steiner has the ability of also having the name value and being a big American guy, which is the same with Matt Morgan, who is a big American. Yeah, because, like, Morgan and Steiner were on the TNA roster at the time. The likes of Dinsmore, Chavo, um, uh, Trevor Murdoch will show up later. A lot of people who weren't on the TNA roster at the time they they brought over this, probably because they couldn't pull them out of TNA tapings for that long. I think with Steiner and Morgan, mostly they were just going for... Who's going to stand out? Mm-hmm. And we'll get the biggest, most muscular Americans that we have at the time. Which I get. I understand why that would be their default reaction. And yeah, they're, they're eye-catching on television, which is a, probably a exactly. smart way to go Especially for, for a group that may have not seen wrestling before. Mm. Like, if we just get the most jacked Americans that we can, that'll be enough. Jazzy Lahoria was introduced as the Commissioner of Rinka King with his big backup, Deadly Danda. They looked awesome, I gotta say. And Jazzy Lahori, I looked up, he has only one other IMDb credit. He was in a movie in 2014, so... Deadly Danda kind of looks like Bad Luck Fale. 
Yeah, he has that, like, military big man vibe going for him, doesn't he? Especially when um, Fale was doing the whole, like, uh, commander gimmick for a while there. Mm. So then they introduce the title belt. Um, Harbour Dancing, Harbour Dancing posts, poses with the title belt. And after, like, 25 minutes of the television show, we finally get the <laughs> opening credits. But also, like, I didn't want them. I just wanted the dance number, the introduction of talents, <laughs> and the intro. That's all I wanted. Well, you'll be pleased, because after they did the credits, they were still in the ring. Everybody was still there. <laughs> they did the opening titles, and then JB is in the ring now. And yep. Sanjay Dutt, Magnus, and Steiner do a promo where they're together. Magna, or Mor- Matt Morgan kind of does a promo where they're, they're yeah, against they do like other. a backstage Lucha Underground style promo. No, we're still in the ring at this stage. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, yeah, because they did the, the face-to-face. So, yeah, Sanjay, Magnus, and Steiner are kind of ganging up on Matt Morgan. And, and Again, it's weird that they didn't seem to translate the English promos. Yeah, which was an interesting choice. I even noted it at the time. I was like, you think they'd at least put subtitles on? Yes, uh, maybe the announcers... That, like, the announcers were doing some quick translations. You could tell later in the show they were, like, reacting to it and explaining what people were saying, so... So perhaps that was their middle ground. So yeah, the two announcers are Siddharth Kanan and Joe Bath. Joe Bath was the longtime TNA Indian announcer from like 2005 to 2011, and Siddharth Kanan seems to be like a a like pretty solid, decent broadcaster there down in India. Has himself some shows and radio shows and TV shows and whatnot. Joe Bath also, according to his Instagram, was on season one of Master Chef India. Ooh, noted Master Chef fans, Gary Kidney and Liam Jones. Yes, I'm a big fan of Master Chef Australia. It's my favorite show, or at least it was until. It's it. All the, the coasts are cancelled, but we've covered this already. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, pay your workers and then you won't get cancelled, I guess. All right, so we finally, after like 25 minutes, we get the first match in ring cocking history. I was disappointed. You were disappointed to see Dr. Nick Dinsmore against Mahabadi Vera? I wanted more entrances, I wanted more backstage promos, I didn't care about no wrestling. So yeah, we have the quarterfinal match at the Ring Cucking World Title Tournament. Nick Dinsmore, Paging Dr. Nick, wrestled Mahabali Vera. Did they get the same woman to do the Paging Dr. Nick as the Paging Dr. Stevie? I hope so. I hope they did like the Paging Doctor and then got somebody to try, to try and voice match the Nick. Paging Dr. Nick, Paging Dr. Nick. So yeah, uh, Shira won. There is going to be very, very little to say about the pro wrestling on these shows. <laughs> I'm breaking down right now. The pro wrestling was house show style pro wrestling, where it was like good guy, bad guy, do the big spots, make it big and over the top, so everyone can understand what's happening, and not a lot of uh, you know intricate spots or anything. It was just big and normal and easy yeah. to understand. Yeah, very quick match where Dinsmore got the heat, Vera made the comeback, hit like a one arm choke bomb, and won. Yeah, I, I liked Vera in this. He seemed very green, but I liked him. Yeah, uh, again, Vera still on Impact Television in the year 2021. So again, we have the long-term legacy of Rinka King right here, Liam. Honestly, that's what I was thinking about while watching this was like, oh man, this guy's still around, huh? He was only like 21, 22 doing this. Like, he's shockingly young. He's still in his early 30s. But like, uh, committed enough to continue on with the field. Because like, I, listen, I don't see no Max B working in 2021. Well, I think it was always a big thing in the TNA Indian television contract, going back to like 2015, I think, when that was signed, when Shira came over, was that they would have an Indian star on television, and that was obviously Shira. Yeah. They were like, Shira Shuffle? Which of these Rinka King guys can we bring over and actually make a full time wrestler? Sorry, I'm just hitting the Shira Shuffle. I wasn't listening to what you were saying. Don't hurt your elbow again, please. Now, listen, I'm, I'm doing it much more carefully this time. So Magnus, Scott Steiner, and Sanjay were backstage. Magnus was on the phone talking to a person he was referring to as the boss, telling them how about because there's three of them in the world title tournament that they're guaranteed to win it. Of course. I'd be very disappointed if they don't. There is no doubt. Scott Steiner was just shouting at Magnus that he'll destroy (laughs) anybody who comes near him. (laughs) I like that none of these guys seem like they like each other. Uh, And he's going to kill Vera. And he, would, and he will, I'm sure. Scott Steiner will kill everybody, yes. Was Magnus known as Sir Brutus Magnus in TNA, or was this just a Rinka King thing? Well, he was known as Brutus Magnus for the first couple of years of his TNA run before he just dropped mm-hmm. the Brutus and became Magnus. But he was never Sir Brutus Magnus, which he is in Rinka yeah, King. Yeah, I felt like that was a specifically Rinka King thing. So yes, that's his Rinka King gimmick. Speaking of something that's not a Rinka King gimmick, American Adonis shows up. Yes, Chris Masters, the masterpiece. And you would be shocked to learn that he is doing the master lock shtick here in Ring King. To be fair though, I think it's a good shtick for a, a country that may not know 
pro wrestling. It is a very easy to understand bit, isn't it? Yeah, like guy comes in, he overwhelms whoever tries to do it. And it's easy to get behind a local guy competing against the jacked American athlete. Mm. So he has his pal Shira, who's cutting his promo for him, and he's doing the usual master lock thing where anybody in the crowd can have an opportunity to break the master lock and win an, an uh, unclear amount of money. My favorite part of it was when the guy he pulls the guy into the crowd, Chris Masters shouts, you just earned a shot at one whatever that is, as he points at the briefcase. <laughs> I also like that he was like, where are you from? And he mentioned the place, and he's like, is that here? <laughs> yeah, it's Pune, which is where they were filming when cacking. He's like, is that is that here? He's like, double-checked with the... The man who was holding the briefcase for him. Where even am I? <laughs> he doesn't know. He's just here for the paycheck. And I don't blame him. So, yeah, Zed, I believe, was his name from the crowd. Might have been Zeb. I think it was Zed. Were you excited for the, the American Adonis' debut in Rinka King? Of course. So Zed gets in the ring. American Adonis applies the master lock and uh, taps him out. A pre-tattooed Matt Morgan. <sighs> Matt Morgan? Uh, sorry, the American Adonis. I, I don't really have the distinction in my head between tattooed and uh, post-tattooed American Donuts. Uh, post-tattooed Chris Masters is jacked up. And, um, you know, remember when he rescued his mother from a house fire? No. Oh, Chris Masters, um, he ran into a, a burning building. I'm going to Google this to make sure I'm right. Former WWE superstar Chris Masters saves mother from burning house. Wow. Yeah. What a hero. Do you think he master locked the house? Well, as the opening uh, line of this Bleacher Report uh, <laughs> article is, no one can escape the master lock, not even a raging fire. Yeah, because the house was uh, like structurally unsound and about to collapse, but then he put his arms around both sides of the house in the master lock to, to hold it together. An uncle notified Masters that a neighbor had locked himself inside his mother's Los Angeles home and threatened to burn the place down if anyone tried to come inside. After some negotiating, Masters decided to call the police. It was at that point that the neighbor started setting the house on fire, but rather than waiting for someone else, Masters sprang into action to save his mother. Masters pulled a tree from the ground and tossed it through a window. Wow. He, along with, with local police officers, were able to get Masters' mother to safety. Holy shit. When was this? This was 2013. How did he not get a huge baby face run after this? I... I'm astounded. He threw a tree through a window, and yeah, good to on you, Chris. Save his Masters. mother. What a guy! Shout out to the American Adonis. Yeah, tapping people out here in Rinka King and saving people with trees. Only a year after this. Yeah. Fair play to him. That's that like legitimately though. That's fucking sick. <laughs> he man, went through a tree through a house to save his mother. What a guy. He just tweeted two hours ago that he's available for shows and appearances. Go email. Masterpiece83 at gm, gmail.com or DM him on Instagram at ChrisMasters310. Go do it right now. Book Chris Masters. He threw a fucking tree through a house. Yeah, he deserves his bookings. Fair play to this guy. So we go backstage to Vera, who's been congratulated by the Terminator on his victory in the first round match. Matt Morgan comes up, congratulates him too. So we see an alliance here between Mahabali Vera and Matt Morgan. Oh, he needs friends. Mm. Clearly. With this heel stable brewing. He has the Turbinator in Matt Morgan. Who more do you need? Exactly. His name is the Turbinator. <laughs> Listen, that's about as hard as you get, right? It's the best nickname. I love it so much. And then that brings us to our main event between two superstars of Ring King. Sir Brutus Magnus and Matt Morgan face off in the, the quarterfinal match of the Ring King title tournament. In which Matt Morgan wins a standard again wrestling match. Magnus stalls, gets the heat, come back. Pretty basic shit over here. Yeah, Matt Morgan wins with the carbon footprint to advance in the tournament. Yeah. Let me get some attack post match. Yeah, perfectly acceptable wrestling. He's attacked by Steiner and Sanjay, but then uh, Vera makes the save and they stare each other down as the first episode of Rinka King goes off the air. This match was uh, pretty basic, but I didn't mind it. Yeah, like, I would have hoped for a little bit more from the actual... Like, I understand why, like, Vera is not doing anything more with uh, Nick Dinsmore because he's only just trained, literally, out of wrestling school and probably not even wrestling school. Wrestling school is probably generous. Like, wrestling boot camp and then put on these shows. But, like, Magnus and Morgan are two, like, regular TNA guys. I would have hoped for, like, something more from them, but it was all right. It was a house match. 
Yeah, but you wanna no wonder this show didn't get a second season with this these kind of main events. I wonder if it was similar to did you ever watch the Evolve China shows? No. Except for the relentless recap packages of them. <laughs> yes. Where it was a crowd who didn't really understand wrestling. Mm-hmm. And they had guys out there doing these high spot matches and they didn't get much of a reaction, but as they went through they learned to slow it down and do more of a staple style per wrestling match and that's what got reactions. Because they did like Gargano and Ricochet and they went out there and they did a thousand spots and got like zero reaction, but then guys would do like how show boo yay heel matches and they would get much bigger reactions. I'm curious to see if that was kind of a similar thing here. Whereas if they had have attempted something like a full high spots kind of match, it would have got like a a middling reaction compared to something like this, where I was like, hey, there's clearly a good guy and a bad guy, and they're doing good guy, bad guy spots throughout. And like, that's not even a thing that's like purely a, a market that's new to wrestling thing. Because if you watch a lot of TNA pay-per-views, you'll see that the crowd are dead, except for like Devon matches randomly, where Devon <laughs> will just do some crowd interaction stuff, the crowd will get into it. And it's just like, um, yeah. oh, so you did, it's just people aren't engaging the audience. And there's times where the audience is engaged with you and you can take them wherever you want. And there's times where you need to engage the audience and you need to take them somewhere because otherwise they will just sit there and not go anywhere. Yeah. But that is episode one, Rinka King. Rinka King's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a good little tidy television. I'm interested to see what the, the next episode where there's not a 25 minute opening segment will look like. What an actual episode of Rinka King will look like. <laughs> Yeah, I, I thought the same thing. I was like, are we going to get to shows now where there's like three matches per show and there's an opening match that kind of like warms people up? Or are we just going to go two matches a show and a lot of angles? It's an interesting promotion where it's like, you're not quite sure where it's going to go from here. Because yeah, when the, the entire first like 25 minutes of the 40 minutes run time, 45 minutes run time without commercials is introducing the entire company and then you just say a couple of quick matches in the back end of the show it doesn't give you a good feel for what like a weekly episode of Rinkaking will look like and i don't really remember what a weekly episode of Rinkaking will look like so i will also find out no clue so that is our first episode of Rinkaking. we will be back next week as i said we might think about doing more than one episode per episode because while we had a lot to introduce here i think uh, by the fact that we completely blasted through the actual matches themselves we may do two episodes of ring King per episode of this show we'll see mm. you can follow us on twitter at tna history pod you can follow liam on twitter at the gleet Mooter. you can follow me on twitter at carrot kidney thanks for listening and bye bye rinka king number one rinka king rinka king rinka king rinka king what was it like rinka king 12 million listeners rinka king rinka king rinka king king sorry i'm too busy singing the rinka king song Obviously. We never even talked about the viewership. Uh, yeah, there was like 14 million people watched this episode of Renka King. Uh, a renowned disgrace. Nowhere near anything that anyone would want. Uh, I don't think it sustained those ratings through the entire run, which is probably the reason it wasn't renewed. Because like 14 million is probably enough to be renewed in India, but it, I don't think it, it sustained 14 million through the entire run of the show. 14 million is so insane. I assume all those 14 million people will subscribe to the Patreon to hear about this episode of Rinka King. And hey, if 14 million people want to subscribe to the Patreon, you can all pay a dollar each and I'll be fine with it. Yeah. But um, yes, show over. Bye. <laughs> Bye. I already did the outro, so. <laughs> Bye. Goodbye. Hey. Hey. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye, good friends, goodbye. And now it's time to go. The moon, the bear, and the big blue house.